BBC London News, 35 beatings before domestic violence is reported. Now your old mobile phone could save lives. One time he actually pinned me down to the floor and uh, he had an axe over my head and he said, I'm going to, to kill you. He threw things at me. I'd get drinks poured over my head. And advice too for women suffering from mental or physical abuse that's coming up. An estimated one in four women will experience it in their lifetime. Massive media coverage of domestic violence is sweeping the UK, Europe and the States. And there are plenty of vultures around to capitalise on it. Even Jamelia cashes in with her cute track. According to every news story, advert, campaign or speech you'll hear about domestic violence. Men are the perpetrators, women are the victims. End of story, good night Vienna. But is that really it? Is that the whole story? I'm not so sure. It seems to me that domestic violence is nothing like as simple as it's presented. Domestic violence where it actually occurs is surely an issue that affects people, not an issue that affects only women. It turns out that when you begin to look into domestic violence and assess the figures, it becomes clear that women actually commit more acts of violence than men do. And women are particularly guilty when it comes to violence against children and babies. Why do we never see this on the BBC News? We're never told these things and many others. We can't be told, because that would detract from the purposes of those who seek to craft a very particular message against men for very particular reasons. To these people, men are only allowed to be guilty of domestic violence. All evidence to the contrary be damned. The government knows the truth, and the people that control the media know. In fact, anyone that works in the domestic violence industry knows. And yet, despite all of this knowledge about the truth of domestic violence, it's presented exclusively as a male-on-female phenomenon. The question is why? Why is the male aggressor, female victim paradigm the only story ever told about domestic violence? For example, the modern day understanding of the rule of thumb. Feminism tells us that the rule of thumb was that a man was permitted in law to beat his wife with a cane so long as it was no thicker than the width of his thumb. I just don't think I could bear to be um, a married woman and give up all my assets to a man who was legally allowed to beat me and rape me and whom I couldn't divorce. How can this woman actually believe that it's ever been accepted in society for men to beat and even rape their wives? How can she believe that men would ever want to be like this? How many other women believe something so ridiculous? Never in English law has wife beating been legal. What happened was that a single judge in England around 1782 did indeed make a statement approving of a man disciplining his wife, and at the time his view was dismissed and was publicly embarrassed. That's why we even know about this one comment from one judge 230 years ago, because of the newspaper records ridiculing his opinion. Women were never oppressed in this way. An example of real oppression that was occurring at that time was actually against husbands, not wives. Until the 1900s, if a woman committed a tort, which is a civil crime such as failure to pay a debt, her husband was punished for it. Men were held to account for anything any member of their family did, and this could include his imprisonment for his wife's behaviour. But this oppression of men received no modern day attention whatsoever, compared with many stories of female oppression in years past. What makes the rule of thumb a particularly malicious slur against all men and masculinity is that the opposite has always been true. The male code has always included, never hit a woman. I would feel like less of a man. I'd feel like, I would feel like some kind of wimpy girl man. <laughs> Did you hit your sister? No, Ma, I was watching a hockey game. Boy, I don't care what game you were watching. I'm raising men in this house, and men do not hit women. Most men are not going to hit a woman at the end of the day. Um, if she's starting something, then they'll attack me. <laughs> That's the way it works. Women have always been able to count on protection from men, and still do. The myth of the rule of thumb is a hate crime against men, and there are many others. The story put out by the media, charities and government is that there are in fact legions of evil men, virtually holding their women prisoner and regularly battering them. A domestic violence epidemic is sweeping Britain. And this is what Stone called his attitude adjuster. It's a pickaxe handle. Here, Stone had written, mind your head, and on the other side, he'd written attitude adjuster. The idea that a man who hits a woman with a pickaxe handle is typical of domestic violence is like saying that September 11th was a typical morning in New York. It doesn't make sense. Of course this is not domestic violence. This man is clearly deep in the land of crazy and that's the end of it. Why would our media be trying to present the outlandish behavior of one man as an example of the suffering of countless women. Perhaps the best approach in tackling the inaccurate view of domestic violence that we're presented with is to ask an immortal question posed by Cicero in ancient Rome. When attempting to deduce who was responsible for a crime, he asked, qui bono? Who benefits? Qui bono! Indeed! Who benefited? 
When you look at who benefits most from a crime, it's often easy to work out who committed the crime. So who benefits from men being wrongly singled out as abusive? Who benefits from labelling women as victims and men as perpetrators? And how do they benefit? It's by asking these questions and following the money trail that we begin to get some answers. Qui bono? Oh, I think we know. For example, I came across this story featuring Anita Roddick. It's the idea of Anita Roddick, the founder of The Body Shop. She's asking people to donate their old phones at any of her stores. And what's this envelope? That's for our old mobile phones that are broken or not in use anymore. They'll then be specially converted and given to women at risk. This will be very affected and in a very, very vulnerable time for women. He continues to stalk, he continues to threaten, threaten her with a live, usually cuts the phone wires. But I found this strange because I knew that the Body Shop Foundation had donated money to the Mankind Initiative, a charity with the principal role of assisting men who are victims of domestic violence. So why was she on the BBC talking exclusively about female victims, whilst quietly, behind the scenes and off air, her company is helping men affected by domestic violence? If she really wanted to help these desperate women, why didn't she just open a free post service to return old phones? Why did she want women to personally go into her shops and hand in phones? This news article I came across explained it. The body shop had been having a hard time in business and it sorely needed a boost. Was she using the issue of domestic violence as a tool to gain free advertising on the BBC and to get women into her shops to spend money? As we'll see, that's very much the real story behind domestic violence in the news. Massive income generation. Domestic violence is big really big, is a hot topic that shows no signs of abating. And on the very same train platform. To see how big it is, just search on domestic violence and see what comes up. In fact, don't type domestic violence, this is bigger than that. Just type the word violence. Now ask yourself, how can domestic violence against women possibly be the first result on a global search on the word violence? This alone should give you an inkling that there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. Given a search on the whole subject of violence, domestic violence results should be on page 25, if even listed at all. Yet there it is, ranked above all other violence perpetrated throughout the world and throughout history above street crime, above wars, above even terrorism. Somehow, above all of the kinds of violence perpetrated overwhelmingly against men, domestic violence against women trumps them all. In the UK, domestic violence against women has been a major point of social consensus over the last 40 years. Journalists, agony aunts, police officers and home office ministers have all decided, against the empirical evidence, that huge numbers of men beat their wives and girlfriends and that women who reported violence to the police were just the tip of the iceberg. Certain people and groups have a lot to gain from exaggerating the problem. Among these are counsellors, domestic violence experts, businesses focusing on women's products, certain charities and various arms of government, including the prison service and the police. Collectively, this group of beneficiaries of domestic violence can be termed the abuse industry. The more that we're all persuaded to believe that lots of men bash their women, the more money these people receive, the more powerful they become. And we're talking hundreds of millions of pounds every year in the UK. And in the US, it's billions. The beauty industry maintains itself by defining um, more and more behaviours, uh, categorising more and more, more behaviours, normal behaviours as acts of abuse. So, for example, whereas 30 years ago, um, the uh, NSPCC would was concerned with the killing and severe beating of children. It's now concerned with smacking children, shouting at children. It uh, has even tried to suggest that five-year-old boys who have an interest in five-year-old girls uh, are paedophiles. It's actually used those words. They're not my words, they're the NSPCC's words. A uh, feminist movement has tried to demonize men by counting as acts of domestic violence, shouting, um, attempting to commit suicide is an act of domestic violence, <laughs> according to the Domestic Violence Project. So these people have massaged some of the facts. They've invented other facts and ignored those awkward facts that were contrary to their purposes. They've published countless figures for domestic violence. None of the figures are small, 
and all of them appear to confirm the existence of a vast and menacing problem, a problem that only appears to affect women.